Hello everyone and welcome to Breastfeeding Titbits presented by the Breastfeeding Clinic in the Helderberg Basin, Cape Town, South Africa. Just a quick disclaimer, the information provided here is to assist you in exploring all available options, to empower you to make well-informed decisions, to help you feel in control, be responsible for and have confidence in your choices. Information should please not be substituted for the diagnosis and treatment of any medical condition and please never disregard professional medical advice or delay in seeking it because of something that you have received here. And this recording is not intended to replace professional or medical or other kinds of advice. Now in this recording, we will be looking at tongue ties under the following headings. What are tongue ties? What's the big deal of consequences, classifications, how to spot it? Um, we'll also look at alternative breastfeeding positions to help compensate for a tight tongue we look at other causes and also to snip or not. Now, a colleague said that in the past, tongue tie opinions and theories would have been discussed and debated within medical journals and professional communities. But now everything is out there on social media and it creates a lot of murky waters for worried parents to wade through. So even among researchers and clinicians, there are disagreement on the definition what a tongue tie is, or a lip tie or a buckle tie, um, even how to identify it, and if it has an effect on breastfeeding or teeth alignment or speech, and then what to do about it, if anything, and how to fix it, and then what other interventions to recommend following revision. Now this lack of consensus in this area often leads to dismissive attitudes around tongue tie. And a conservative approach to its management when clearly, in some cases, it's the underlying root cause of various issues. Now, research points to a lack of formal training about ties, assessment tools, research outcomes and treatment options in fields of medicine that addresses this condition. Now, I hope this recording will provide some insight because due to what I just said, parents may receive conflicting messages from different specialities. So if the answer is yes to any of these questions or observations, continue watching this recording and later in the recording I will take you through an assessment for tongue tie. So stay tuned. Okay. <clears throat> First question. Does the baby have an inability to elevate the tongue at least midway with a wide open mouth? Meaning, does the tongue stay on the floor of the mouth? When the baby cries or yawns or when the upper gum ridge is stimulated? Um, is the baby able to lift the tongue tip to the palate uh, with a round or square tongue, not a V or a heart shape like the, the tongue in the picture? Now a flat tongue or only the sides of the tongue lifting may indicate a tight frenulum or it may indicate low tone. So just um, FYI, a tongue tip elevation when the baby lifts their tongue to the palate in premature babies, that indicates respiratory distress and unreadiness of two feet, not, not that they have a wind. Next observation, <clears throat> the baby can't cup or maintain suction on the finger or on the breast. So some babies are able to latch, yet the baby doesn't stay well latched or they slide back to the nipple or the seal breaks with a clicking sound during your feet, like... And there might also be some humping rather than cupping of the tongue when the baby is sucking on your finger. Next question. The baby has an inability to stick the tongue out past the gum line. Or you see maybe a bowl shape in the tongue when the baby tries to stick their tongue out. Um, like this baby in the picture. Um, a mother will often state that she notices the baby doesn't stick the tongue out or when the baby cries only the tongue edges elevate, uh, but the center stays low, causing the tongue to form kind of a dimple or a bowl shape. Now, if you want the baby to, to, to make the baby stick out their tongue, you can stimulate the lower gum ridge with your fingertip. Um, and just FYI, touching the future tooth bearing surface of the lower gum ridge triggers reflexive biting. So a clue is if baby bites while feeding, perhaps the tongue has a hard time extending over the bottom gums. Okay, so another question is, is there a diminished lateral movement of the tongue when the outer gum ridge is stimulated from the center to the side? 
so the baby's tongue will bunch or look thick as the baby tries to move the tongue from side to side because it's being held down on the floor of the mouth. And we will look at how to check for this later in the recording. And then last question, do you see a white tongue uh, but not white patches elsewhere? So this is an observation by many parents that the tongue midway looks uh, uh, looks like it has a white coating. Um, uh, this is it's called a milk tongue and it is often confused with thrush. So often the mother and the baby have been treated for thrush without improvement. So what might be happening if the baby's tongue is tight, um, it can't elevate to rub against the palate to clean itself. So we think in utero the tongue presses against the palate and shapes it into a broad a huge shape, um, not not like the baby's palate in the picture. That palate is high and not broad and not wide. So the palate might be high if the tongue is tight and couldn't press against the palate to smooth it out. Though so the palate can also be high if the baby was born prim and didn't have enough time to smooth out the palate with the tongue. Or if the baby was breech, or perhaps there are some congenital or genetic disorders resulting in a high palate. In any case, a, a high or narrow palate complicates breastfeeding. Now, tethered oral tissues refers to restrictive tissue in the mouth that impacts how a person is able to use their mouth. Now, the presence of a piece of tissue or frenulum under the tongue or lips or around the cheeks does not mean someone is tied. So just because you can see it, it doesn't mean that it will affect breastfeeding. Similarly, just because you can't see it doesn't mean that it's not going to affect breastfeeding. A true tie affects the function of a body. So its appearance is not as important as how it functions and how comfortable and effective the baby can breastfeed. So some babies will indeed benefit from phrenotomy or a snip and others who have multifactorial issues or feeding difficulties may have minimal or no benefit from a procedure. So always, always make sure that it is not your position or the baby's position or the baby's latch or the baby's suckling that needs adjustment because it may be as simple as that. Okay, so the frenulum under the tongue stabilizes the tongue and determines the tongue's range of motion. So when the tongue moves inadequately, the baby cannot suck and breathe in a coordinated, efficient manner. Um, the work of breastfeeding increases. It puts the baby at risk for limited intake and fatigue. And apart from hurting the mother, the ineffective feeding does not stimulate the breast enough for ongoing ample milk production. Now, tremors or trembling or shaking of the tongue uh, and the lower jaw after feeding can occur due to fatigue in a baby who has uh, or who uses compensatory sucking techniques, meaning they are trying to compensate for something else not working as it should. And I think it's a reliable sign that the baby is working too hard to feed. And oral uh, uh, anatomy and motor function should be assessed when tremors occur and also the baby's growth uh, should be followed closely. So the sublingual frenulum under the tongue is actually a fold of tissue that arises as the tongue lifts and places tension on the floor of the mouth. So sometimes the fold contains only oral mucosa and this will appear almost see-through and it will look something like this. Sometimes the fold contains oral mucosa and floor of the mouth fascia and it will look a little thicker, probably something like this. Um, or it, be, uh, it could contain mucosa layer, fascia and tongue muscle. And it will look something like this. So a direct correlation between what the frenulum looks like and if it has an impact on how the tongue moves has not yet been established. And the diagnosis of tongue tie remains subjective. Let me just repeat this. The diagnosis of tongue tie remains subjective. This means get a second opinion. It takes much more than a hasty glance over a baby's mouth to ascertain if the tongue is restricted or not. So the diagnosis of tongue tie in the context of breastfeeding involves combination of two elements. 
the examination of the baby's tongue and observing the baby breastfeeding. Now, how many babies are being diagnosed as having a tongue tie or dismissed that it is not an issue? Uh, but the person making the diagnosis didn't even bother to observe the baby breastfeeding. And very often, the person examining the baby's tongue and observing the baby breastfeeding is someone who is not qualified to diagnose. So if you think your baby has a tight friend in them and you are in pain during breastfeeding, again, first make sure that it is not your position or the baby's position or the baby's latch or the baby's suckling that needs adjustment. So listen for breaks in the seal, which causes that clicking or smacking sound. And sometimes the position of the baby's head during a feed negatively influences tongue, the, the tongue position. For example, when the baby's chin is more on their chest with the head uh, tilted to the front, the nose might be buried in the breast. The baby can't open their mouth wide. They can't stick up their tongue. They can't take enough breast tissue into the mouth and they can't latch deep enough. So... We check positioning and latch first because, as mentioned also in a previous recording, any issues, whether it is with the breast, like engorgement or mastitis, or with the nipple, like nipple pain, cracks, blisters, or with the mother's milk supply, or the baby's weight gain, or the baby's behavior, the first thing that we do is look at positioning and latch because more often than not, it is the cause of the problem. So remom remember, if it's, uh, it's not how the tongue looks, but how the tongue functions that is important. Although um, all the things that I've just mentioned could also be because the baby has a tight frenulum. So this is a list of taught questions related to the baby. It can provide a clue for tethered oral tissues and also show some possible consequences, even before one takes a closer look at the tongue and breastfeeding. Now, some tongue-tied babies breastfeed without difficulty. You know, research shows that about half of babies diagnosed with tongue-tie or ankyloglossia can breastfeed without difficulty. Um, and remember, breastfeeding involves two people, a mother and a baby. So sometimes the mother and baby's anatomy are just uh, so that they fit perfectly and the baby with a tight tongue can get milk easily and grow well and not hurt the mother at all while others cause their mother pain and they don't get enough milk and they have difficulty um, feeding, breathing, swallowing in a coordinated manner and they are very unhappy during and after feed. So there is now sufficient data from several studies that a tight tongue can cause breastfeeding problems because some babies with a tight tongue just cannot get a deep latch and they cannot exercise the full range of tongue motions necessary to breastfeed effectively and comfortably. Also, a limitation in the mobility or strength of the tongue requires the baby to use compensatory activities like uh, jaw clenching or lip retraction to feed, which often damages the mother's nipples. Um, and as for long-term consequences of an untreated tight tongue on eating solids with comfort, uh, proper teeth alignment and other dental pathologies, because of the lack of motion of the tongue causes an inability to perform intraoral self-cleansing. Um, also issues with speech, breathing, sleeping problems. It's difficult to say because each baby is so unique, but there are some evidence to this. And as mentioned, many professionals who work with babies believe that the position of the tongue at rest while feeding shapes the structures in the mouth, particularly the hard palate. So, which may further impact uh, teeth and speech, um, but additional research is, is needed for the, um, in this area. Now, some of the symptoms of tongue tie overlap or are similar to those of a high palate. Um, and it can, can make it challenging to determine which symptoms are due to the tie and which are due to the baby's palate. But if the baby is born full term and was mostly head down in the last weeks of pregnancy, a high palate for me is one of the first signs to investigate tongue function further. So high palates are another complication to an already complex situation for tongue-tied babies. Now even if, when the ties themselves are resolved, problems with feeding and reflux, congestion, open mouth breathing may persist. And cranial sacral therapy can be beneficial for babies with high palates. But the baby may also need work done by an occupational therapist or speech language pathologist. 
Now, luckily, according to the experts, we can enact change on the palate by changing the inputs in the palate as the bone grows. So breastfeeding has a positive effect on shaping the palate. This is a list of tethered oral tissue questions related to the mother. And just FYI, many mothers believe that they have an oversupply or an overactive letdown reflex. But if the baby cannot handle the flow, it's often not because the flow is too rapid, it's often because the baby's latch could be more effective. Okay, let's look at classifications. Now there are many different tongue classifications. Um, Ties are generally divided into two main groups, anterior and posterior. And this is simply a way of describing what you can see. So anterior ties obviously um, is more towards the front. And the posterior tie uh, is hidden under the mucosa lining of the floor. <clears throat> But the problem with the word posterior is that those unfamiliar with this classification may mistakenly think that the tongue tie is uh, in the back of the throat. The better descriptive term for this uh, is uh, submucosal or hidden ties. Now, most practitioners use a classification where the tongue is, uh, is given a grade of one, two or three or four. Um, but these classification systems is merely a descriptive or a description of where the ties attach to the tongue. So class 4 babies could have severe breastfeeding problems and class 1 babies could feed normally and vice versa. So I have uh, said this already, it's not necessarily how the tongue looks, but how it functions that is important. And this, to this end, uh, assessment tools have been developed, not just descriptive classifications. So uh, there are quite a few assessment tools available. Here they are, some of them. Um, and some people feel that all babies should be screened for tongue tie uh, or other oral issues within a week of, of birth. So let's look at how to spot it. Now a frenulum may be thin or stretchy or it may be short and thick. It's difficult to tell if it will pose a problem for breastfeeding or not pose a problem just by looking at it. And let me repeat this, it is difficult to tell if a tight frenulum will pose a problem for breastfeeding or not just by looking at it. You have to ask, <clears throat> does the frenulum interfere with the baby's ability to breastfeed comfortably and remove milk well? And have other possible causes of a tight frenulum and or feeding difficulties been ruled out? So a mother's breast can come in many different shapes and sizes, as can the baby's mouth. The crucial factor is how the two function together. Hey, <clears throat> this must be the fourth time I've said this, so hopefully you'll get it by now. So the picture in the middle and on the left are ties that uh, has a more anterior attachment. And... Um, yeah, the tie is close to the tongue tip. Um, and it typically it causes a little heart shape uh, indented appearance to the tongue tip at rest or with examination. And tongue ties with a more posterior attachment, like the picture on the right, can be a little bit more difficult to visualize, but may still interfere with breastfeeding if it affects the tongue mobility and range of motion. So here are some possible signs for recognizing a tight tongue and not all of these need to appear. So the baby's tongue might be notched or hard shaped when the baby tries to stick out their tongue. The tongue might be attached very close to the gum ridge rather than more towards the floor of the mouth. The baby may be unable to stick their tongue out past their bottom gums. The baby, uh, when the baby cries, the tongue stays on the floor of the mouth. Also, when the baby cries, only perhaps the sides of the tongue lifts, um, not the whole tongue. And when you feel for the frenulum, it, it feels short, less than a centimeter, and it might feel very inelastic. Um, the baby might make clicking noises while feeding, that the sound of the vacuum breaking while feeding, when the baby loses their grip on the breast. Breastfeeding sessions might take a very long time. 
baby may be very unhappy after breastfeeding. The mother may experience pain while breastfeeding. She may have sore or injured nipples. The baby might bite while breastfeeding. Um, and the baby may have a high or very narrow upper palate. Okay, so let's take a closer look at uh, one of the assessment tools called TABI or the tongue tie assessment, uh, tongue tie and uh, breastfed babies assessment tool. So the TABI only assesses tongue structure and function, not how it impacts breastfeeding, though it is quick to use and really a simple to score evaluation of the severity of tongue tie and tabby provides a visual aid to be clear about crucial features of tongue tie and it looks at the appearance of the tongue tip it looks at the attachment of the frenulum and the mobility of the tongue it's, it's lift and protrusion how far it can stick out so tabby is intended to be used as part of an initial assessment of a perceived tongue tie now, four questions are asked. What does the tongue tip look like? Um, and this is usually the most obvious and most likely to be noted by parents. Though a notch in the tip of the tongue may only be noticed when the baby tries to lift their tongue. Another question is where is it fixed to the gum? So with some training and experience, that this can be easily visualized. Um, if it's difficult to see, one can gently use an index finger to feel where the frenulum is attached. Another question is how high can the tongue lift? But this is with a wide open mouth, note that. Um, one would need awareness of normal tongue lift in babies and the tongue might curl back when restricted so it appears to lift. Um, but the lift is most easily viewed if the baby is awake and crying. And then the last question is how far can the tongue stick out? Um, the easiest way to assist protrusion is to watch the baby as they uh, latch onto the breast. Um, are they able to bring the tongue out to latch? Um, you can also brush the lower lip downwards towards the chin. This could also elicit uh, tongue protrusion. So basically, one would look at the picture and baby's tongue and assign a score and then add it up to note the suggested meaning. And a score of 8 indicates normal tongue function. A score of 6 or 7 is considered borderline. Um, and the suggestion is to wait and see um, with support of breastfeeding positioning and attachment. And 5 and below suggest there may be impairment of tongue function and this may or may not have an effect on breastfeeding. Now, depending on the score, go to the appropriate care provider for a diagnosis and further treatment. And this tool is freely available on the internet. And just to mention, if the decision is not to treat a tie and just to follow up that wait and see, make sure that the baby is followed up with a lactation consultant every week because low, uh, late or very late intervention could result in ineffective feeding patterns and cause low milk supply and low weight gain. Okay, let's take a closer look at the Hazel Baker assessment tool for lingual frenulum function. Now, this tool is a little bit more involved but it is accepted as a valid and reliable and sensitive and specific um, as proven by numerous studies. So the uh, Hazel Baker score is calculated after scoring for appearance and function items. Now, if this seems way too complicated for you, then visit a qualified lactation consultant because this is the assessment tool most often used by them. Speech and language pathologists uh, usually use the Martinelli score um, but anyway, the Hazel Baker assessment tool is freely available on the internet, uh, so perhaps print it uh, out as we discuss the scoring. Well, at least my understanding of how to go about scoring it after attending a workshop on it run by Allenson uh, many, many, many moons ago. So let's, uh, let's first look at the appearance. So the appearance of the tongue when lifted is determined by inspecting the front edge of the tongue as the baby cries or yawns or tries to lift the tongue or extend the tongue. So two points are awarded uh, for a round tongue or a square tongue and one point if there's a slight cleft in the tip and no points if the tongue has a hard shape. So the baby in this picture gets one point because we see a slight cleft in the tip. 
The next item is the length of the lingual frenulum, and that is determined by noting its approximate length in centimeters as the tongue is lifted. Two points if it is more than one centimeter, um, or if the frenulum uh, is absent, like with the hidden or submucosal tie, also gets two points. One point if it's one centimeter in length and no points if it's less than one centimeter. So here I usually have my gloved finger in baby's mouth under the tongue and I turn my finger sideways to feel the length of the frenulum. And the baby in this picture gets no points as this frenulum is less than one centimeter in length. Okay, now attachment of the frenulum to the tongue is determined by noting its origin under the tongue. So it should be approximately one centimeter posterior to the tongue tip. So if the frenulum occupies less than 50% of the tongue underside in the midline, it gets, baby gets two points, one point if it occupies 50 to 75% of the tongue underside, and no points if it occupies 75 to 100% of the tongue underside, meaning it's like attached to the tongue tip. So here I have the soft part of my index finger under the tongue and I feel from where the frenulum is attached under the tongue to the tongue tip. So the baby in this picture gets two points because the frenulum occupies less than 50% of the tongue underside. Remember the attachment should be approximately one centimeter posterior to the tongue tip. Elasticity of the frenulum is determined by palpating the frenulum for elasticity while lifting the baby's tongue. So two points if it's very elastic, uh, which is excellent. One point if it's moderately elastic and no points if there is no elasticity. And I feel <clears throat> uh, this I feel when I, when, the, when I feel for the length of a frenulum. <clears throat> Now, the attachment of the lingual frenulum to, uh, oh, sorry, this is next, is the attachment of the lingual frenulum to the inside of the lower gums. So, um, it should insert nearer to the center of the uh, inside of the lower gums or uh, into the tongue muscle on the floor of the mouth. So, two points if it attaches to the floor of the mouth or well below the gum ridge. One point if it attaches just below the gum ridge and no points if it is attached to the ridge. So I use my finger to feel under the baby's tongue on the floor of the mouth sweeping from one side to the other. So if the frenulum is attached to the gum rim, you will have to jump over like a guitar string. Um, and then you can note where it is attached to the floor of the mouth or to the gum ridge. So most babies, I feel it lower on the gum rim towards the mouth floor. So the baby in this picture gets no points as the frenulum is attached to the gum rim. Okay, let's look at function. So lateralization is measured by eliciting the transverse tongue reflex. So this is when the baby moves the tongue to the side when um, when um, it's touched um, on either side of the tongue. So this is done by just tracing the lower gum ridge and brushing, brushing sorry, the lateral edges of the tongue with your finger. So if you run your finger along the baby's lower gum rim, the tongue will try and follow it. Um, if the tongue twists, it suggests a, a possible tongue tie. So two points if the baby is able to completely follow um, your finger with their tongue without twisting it. One point if the body of the tongue follows, but not the tongue tip. It might look like a, a truck falling over. And um, no points if the tongue doesn't follow the finger at all. So the baby in this picture gets two points. Um, now I, I usually start my finger in the middle of the lower gum rim and I trace it, say, to the right side and then back to the middle and back to the right side and I see how the baby's tongue follows my finger. And then I tra trace the lower gum to the other side, say left. Uh, again and back to the middle and back to the left side and see how the baby's tongue follows my finger. Okay, so lift uh, of the tongue is noted when the finger is removed from the baby's mouth. So if the baby cries, then the tongue tip should lift to mid-mouth without jaw closure. So we want to see uh, um, if the baby can lift their tongue way up to the roof of the mouth. 
uh, no, all the way up is perfect. Halfway is enough for most babies to able to, to be able to breastfeed. Now, most tongue-tied babies can only lift their tongue when the mouth are mostly closed, meaning uh, limited elevation, and this suggests possible tongue tie. So, observe elevation past midline when the baby's mouth is wide open. So, ideally, when the baby is crying, so the baby gets two points if the tongue tip lifts to mid mouth, only one point if it's only the edges lifting to mid mouth. And no points if the tip stays at the alveolar ridge or um, the tip rises only to mid mouth with jaw closure, or you see mid tongue dimples. Um, and the baby in this picture gets two points. So, extension of the tongue is measured by eliciting the tongue extrusion reflex. So to see if the baby can stick out their tongue, you just touch baby's lips um, and the baby will probably open their mouth. And then you can touch the front of the lower gums with your fingertip or brush the lower lip downwards towards the chin uh, or gently tap on the tongue tip or maybe lightly rub the bottom gums. And these will elicit tongue protrusion and it will make the baby stick their tongue out. So we want to see the tongue come out flat over the lip without dipping or pointing down. If the baby can only stick the tongue out when the mouth is closed, that could indicate a tie further back. And um, two points if the baby can stick the tongue over the lower lip, one point if they can only stick it over the lower gums, and no points if they can do neither, um, or if the anterior uh, or mid-tongue humps, uh, or if the tongue dimples. So the baby in this picture only gets one point as the tongue could not stick over the lower lip. It could only stick over the lower gums. So just to mention, it is a common fallacy that a tongue can't be tied or problematic if the baby can extend it over the lower gum line. Now the tongue is capable of numerous different movements and normal movements in one direction doesn't guarantee normal movements in all directions. So the motion of breastfeeding is very specific. It's primarily uh, up and down, not out necessarily. Anyway, um, spread of the anterior tongue is determined by first eliciting a rooting reflex and then just before cupping um, by tickling the upper and lower lips and look for even thinning of the anterior tongue. So two points for complete even thinning, one point for moderate or partial thinning and no points if there's little or no thinning. And I say the, uh, I think the baby in the picture gets one point for moderate thinning. And then cupping is a measure of the, the degree to which the tongue hugs um, the finger as the baby sucks on it. So two points if the entire tongue has a nice firm cup, one point if the only sides cups, uh, and there's only moderate cupping, and no points if there's poor or, or no cupping. Peristalsis is a backward wave-like motion of the tongue during sucking that should originate at the tip of the tongue and it is felt with the back of the finger. So you will insert a finger in the baby's mouth and gently place the finger pad against the roof of the mouth and the nail down on the baby's tongue and this should elicit sealing and sucking with an anterior posterior peristaltic rhythmic movement of the tongue. The two points for complete anterior posterior movement, one point for partial movement or movement uh, originating posterior to the tip, and no points if there's no movement or reverse peristalsis. Oh, I see there is a picture now of where you can see little or no thinning of the anterior tongue. And then uh, last. Um, on this list is snapback, and that is heard as a clicking sound where the tethered, tethered tongue loses its grasp on the finger or breast when the baby tries to generate negative pressure. So two points if there's no snapback, one point for periodic snapback, and no points uh, for frequent snapback or snapback with each suck. Okay. So values are assigned as indicated on the score sheet. 14 is a perfect function score regardless of appearance items. And surgical treatment is not recommended. 
Um, 11 is an acceptable function score only if appearance items is more or equal than 8. And less uh, than 11 for function scores indicate function impairment. And a phrenotomy should be considered if management fails. And phrenotomy is according to assessment tool deemed necessary if the appearance score is less than 8. So let's take a quick look at two assessments. <clears throat> so, <clears throat> although this obviously look like, looks like a tie, if you are not qualified to diagnose, um, neither you nor me can make a diagnosis, but we can say what we see and through assessment determine if this baby should be seen by an ENT or a dentist for a diagnosis and a decision to treat. So the appearance of the tongue when lifted, one point for a slight cleft in the tip. The elasticity of the frenulum, determined by palpating the frenulum for elasticity. There was no elasticity, so no points. It was very tight. The length of the frenulum is determined by noting its approximate length in centimeters as the tongue is lifted. This baby gets no points because this frenulum is less than one centimeter in length. Attachment of the frenulum to the tongue is determined by noting its origin under the tongue. Um, this baby gets no points as the frenulum occupies 75 to 100 percent of the tongue underside in the midline. Remember the attachment should be approximately one centimeter posterior to the tongue tip. And this one is attached very, very closely to the tip. Next, we look at um, tongue function. So lateralization is measured by eliciting the transfer tongue reflex. Again, no points because this tongue could not follow the finger at all. Lift of the tongue is noted when the finger is removed from the baby's mouth. If a baby cries, when the tongue tip um, should lift to mid-mouth with a wide open mouth. So no points here because the tongue stays at the alveolar ridge. The tongue could not really lift. Extension of the tongue is measured by eliciting the tongue extrusion reflex. So no points here as the baby could neither stick the tongue tip over the lower lip or the lower gums. Spread of the anterior tongue is determined by eliciting a rooting reflex. So just before cupping by tickling the upper and lower lips and looking for even thinning of the anterior tongue. There is no thinning here. And then cupping is measured at uh, a measurement of the degree to which the tongue hugs the finger as the baby sucks on it. And one point because there was some moderate cupping, the size of the tongue cupping the finger. And peristalsis is a backward wave-like motion of the tongue during sucking that should originate at the tip of the tongue. Um, there was no points here because this suck sucking action was reversed. And then snapback is heard as a clicking sound when the tethered tongue loses its grasp on the breast. No points because there was snapback with each suck. So, values assigned as indicated on the score sheet. One point for appearance, one point for function. Which means phrenotomy according to the assessment tool deemed necessary and yes, the ENT did snip this tongue and the baby breastfed for many, many moons. Let's look at another example um, and start with the appearance again. So this looks like a submucosal tie, but let's see what the assessment says regarding having it snipped or not. Now the appearance of the tongue when lifted, uh, two points for a round tongue, um, although we can see a little dip in the body of the tongue as it is being held back. The elasticity of the frenulum is determined by palpating the frenulum for elasticity when lifting the baby's tongue. Now, the length of the frenulum um, assessment tool says two points if a hidden or submucosal tie um, 
get two points anyway. So I'm going to guess two points because we can't measure the elasticity. So two points. Um, and as mentioned, for the length of the lingual frenulum, the assessment tool says two points if it's a hidden or a submucosal tire because we can't measure it. And then attachment of the frenulum to the tongue is determined by noting, noting its origin under the tongue and two points because it occupies less than 50% of the tongue underside uh, in the midline. And then the attachment of the frenulum to the inside of the lower gums is determined by noting its location of the frenulum. Two points because it is attached to the floor of the mouth while below the gum ridge. Okay, now let's look at function. So lateralization is measured by eliciting the transfer tongue reflex. The baby gets one point because the tongue uh, followed my finger, but not the tongue tip. It, it, it looked like a truck falling over. Lift of the tongue is determined by noting, uh, is noted when the finger is removed from the baby's uh, mouth. If the baby cries, then the tongue uh, tip should lift to mid-mouth without jaw closure. So this baby gets no points um, because the tongue tip looked like it was lifting, but the mid-tongue dimples. And then extension of the tongue is measured uh, by eliciting the tongue extrusion reflex. So the baby gets one point because the baby was able to stick the tongue out over the lower, lower gums, but not over the lower lip. And then spread of the tongue is determined by eliciting the rooting reflex first, uh, just before cupping, uh, tickling the upper and lower lips, looking for even thinning of the anterior tongue. Baby gets one point because there's moderate or partial thinning. And then, um, yeah, I think this is what a two-point spread would look like. And then cupping is, is the uh, a measure of the degree to which the tongue hugs the finger as the baby sucks on it. This baby got two points because the entire tongue had a nice firm cup. And peristalsis is a backwards wave-like motion of the tongue during sucking that should originate at the tip of the tongue and this baby got two points for complete anterior posterior movement and then snapback is heard as a clicking sound when the tethered tongue loses its grasp uh, on a finger or breast and this baby gets one point because there was some periodic snapback okay and values are assigned 10 for appearance and 8 for function so the assessment tool says um, less than 11 for function uh, indicates function impairment and a phrenotomy should be considered if management fails. So we try management first. Look at the baby and mother's position, uh, support uh, under the bridge for a deeper latch, uh, more comfortable effect and effective feed. And I'll, I'll explain this in the next slide. Anyway, and also refer for body work. Now, if these doesn't help to make the feed more comfortable for mom and baby, as well as more effective, meaning the baby gets the milk they need, then take the baby to an ENT that specializes in submucosal ties. Um, and I have the website listed there so you can find a provider at www.airwayhealth.co.za okay right so as mentioned earlier um, we said if you think your baby has a tight frenulum and you are in pain during feeding First, make sure that it is not your position or the baby's position or the baby's latch or the baby's suckling that needs adjustment. Because often just uh, positioning baby in a more tummy down position with mum being more laid back does the trick. If that doesn't work, other compensatory techniques to compensate is to support the breast from underneath to help the baby get a deeper latch. Now, it is based on medieval way of breastfeeding. Looking at paintings of mothers and babies from previous centuries, Myrthe von Lonkhuizen developed what she calls the Concord hold. So, uh, because it lifts the breast but angles the nipple downward like the nose of a Concord aircraft. 
So her infographic is available on the internet. You can look it up at myrtleibclc.nl. So when a mother supports her breast with the baby's lower jaw uh, touches her breast, um, it also helps lift the breast over the jaw. And the parent's arm also pulls the baby's lower body closer, allowing the baby's head to, to tip back gently. So you can start with your fingers between your breast on your chest, slide your fingers on your chest around your breast and below where the baby's jaw is, and then start lifting the breast until your nipples feel more comfortable. Now, some mothers lift their breasts so that it forms a straight line with the baby's jaw. Um, and this lift may change the position of the nipple past the deep palate more towards the comfort zone. Now, apart from uh, not experiencing nipple pain anymore, mothers often note that their baby's suckling also seems stronger. Okay, so if there are breastfeeding problems early after birth, tight frenulums may be a contributor or to baby's feeding problems, but there are many conditions that may impair the function of the tongue by placing tension on the frenulum, making it appear restrictive. So maybe the position in utero could be a cause, or the birth itself, or instrumental birth like vacuum or forceps or conditions like a small jaw or peer robin sequence even babies with laryngo or tracheomalacia may appear to have tight frenulums so maybe the least invasive and first place to start after trying different positions would be some form of body work now the musculoskeletal infant breastfeeding assessment questionnaire will give you a clue to take your baby for body work and this tool is freely available on the internet. And body work is um, manual therapy for the body. So body workers locate areas in the body impacted by restrictions and tightness, uh, decreased mobility, asymmetry, and then they mobilize these areas. And it could be done by a chiropractor, a visual therapist, um, osteopath, a cranial sacral therapist, um, maybe somebody can do myofascial release, um, but getting bodywork done before a procedure to surgically release a tie will also help optimize things ahead of time and ensure a procedure isn't done unnecessarily. So for a bodywork pr practitioner, you can go to this website listed here, um, cranial.org.za. Okay, SNP or not. Now, as you may know, major controversy exists around when and how the frenulum is determined to be limiting movements and when that limitation is sufficient to warrant surgical intervention. And as mentioned before, the problem uh, is um, decision making around phrenotomy. Um, the problem is that it is subjective. The decision is subjective to the practitioner's bias. And this subjective nature of ankyloglossia or tongue tie diagnosis is a major dilemma, not only for clini clinical practice and research, but also it creates a, um, a lot of parental confusion. Now, there is also concern that there might be a trend for potential overdiagnosis, but if the uh, providing this service is warranted, it may prevent the premature termination of breastfeeding. So babies with a diagnosed tongue tie who are having difficulties breastfeeding despite support with breastfeeding could benefit from division of the frenulum to facilitate the initiation and maintenance of exclusive breastfeeding. But again, the decision to treat is one that requires a high level of clinical skill and judgment. So surgical release for a restrictive sublingual frenulum, this classic tongue tie or anterior tie, it can be an effective intervention if maternal nipple pain and or poor milk transfer or milk supply issues and baby's weight gain issues cannot be addressed through conservative measures. But this deep oral tissue incisions beyond the classic tongue tie incision have unique hazards and it requires a high level of skill and attention to avoid potential risks of bleeding and tissue damage 
and it is not possible to visualize the branches of the lingual nerve and there's a risk of ne uh, nerve um, injury with the resulting pins and needle feeling or numbness of the tongue and babies are unable to report any loss of uh, tongue sensation. And just FYI, presence of an upper lip frenulum is normal in a baby and has an, an unclear relationship to breastfeeding difficulties. So if this maxillary labial frenulum connects the underside of the top lip to the gums and the term lip tie describes a membrane that restricts the normal movement of the lip, uh, top lip. So confusingly, some people may use lip tie to refer to the normal presence of this membrane um, in this location. And as with uh, the membrane under the tongue, just because there is a frenulum under the lip, it doesn't mean that there's a problem. And the upper lip frenulum often uh, changes in appearance as the baby grows. And there's confusion about its role and its uh, significance. So during a breastfeed, the lower lip may be turned out a bit. But the upper lip is neutral. It is just resting on the breast, just helping to create a seal. Now, <clears throat> given the role of the top lip during breastfeeding, uh, just to rest on the breast and make a seal, the, the position of the frenulum under the top lip is unlikely to be a cause of breastfeeding problems for a majority of mothers and babies. So the top lip doesn't need to gape away from the gum or flare out like the lips of a fish. Uh, actually flared or flipped up upper lip during a feed might be a sign of a shallow latch or a baby overshooting the breast. And um, in this case, overuse of the upper lip often produces a large sucking blister on the lip. So before diagnosing your baby with a uh, lip tie, perhaps again have position and latch checked by someone trained in breastfeeding support. Now, there are several reasons to explain why a baby's top lip might curl in uh, or overly grip the breast or lose suction or be moving excessively and seem to cause pain. And any of these can be confused with a lip tie. Now, if position and latch are optimum and the baby's upper lip is still curling in or losing its grip on the lip, it might be due to a tight uh, lip, uh, top lip frenulum, which might make it more difficult for the baby to, to stay attached. Um, and a very tight top lip could produce a sucking blister on the mucosal surface, the underside of the upper lip. So you will need to flip up the upper lip to see um, that sucking blister. Now, a local cranial sacral therapist's idea on how to cope with this is by letting the baby suck on a finger before offering the breast and see if this will flip, flip, flip out the, the top lip. But as mentioned, the label frenulum under the top lip changes over time. No, sorry, I haven't mentioned this, but it changes over time. Um, and it tends to become thinner and smaller as the baby grows. So the consensus is that the presence of a prominent uh, midline lip uh, frenulum doesn't predict tooth spacing later. So again, before diagnosing your own baby with a lip tie um, and make baby undergo a very painful procedure, have position and latch checked by someone trained in breastfeeding support. Also, just as a side note, uh, consensus are that surgery to release buccal frenulums or cheek ties should not be performed. Although it is thought that a very, very tight buccal ties can interfere with gape response or maybe lip sealing, maybe causing swallowing of air, maybe interfere with stabilizing the nipple or creating a vacuum. Um, again, just because you can feel them doesn't mean that they need to be released, um, but only in severe cases might revisions be necessary. Okay, so if your practitioner says a SNP is needed and the parents decide to go through with it, Follow-up after phrenotomy has been performed is imperative because the clinician who performed the SNP needs to assess the effectiveness of the surgery and document the occurrence of any adverse events or complications experienced by the baby, including prolonged bleeding, persistent pain, infection on the incision site, maybe oral aversion uh, experienced by the baby. And a good practitioner will refer a mother-baby pair back to a lactation consultant for further breastfeeding assistance. Now, some tongue-tied babies' uh, symptoms may worsen after a snip or take a while to go away because babies may have recruited other muscles and develop alternate uh, sucking patterns to compensate for tethered oral tissues. And this could uh, uh, might not change instantaneously. 
Okay, right. So evidence is lacking to support prescribing pro uh, procedural manual ma manipulation or stretching at or near the incision site um, after a phrenotomy procedure. Though uh, specific oral motor exercises such as resistance training with a finger may be appropriate depending on the presentation of symptoms and the baby's response to exercises. So people trained in bodywork can help with this. Um, and the disorganized or weak sucking patterns can also benefit from these exercises. Um, and they are often started before the SNP. And just to mention, if the practitioner says a SNP is needed and parents decide not to go through with it, keep in touch with your lactation consultant and monitor baby's weight and mom's milk supply. Because some babies rely on ample milk supply and strong milk ejection to gain weight in the early days and weeks. And then this may change as the baby gets older and the milk supply starts to establish and the baby cannot really generate sufficient vacuum to maintain the milk production or get what they need and to uh, continue to grow as expected. Also, um, for these babies, general sucking exercises to strengthen tongue muscles can still be valuable. As can body work and referral to speech language pathologists to, to help address the impact of tight tongue maybe on speech and eating later on. So these are just some suggested oral motor exercises that you can find online. In summary, um, when, when you think your baby has a tongue tie, first make sure that it is not your position, your baby's position, your baby's latch or your baby's suckling that needs adjustment. And if the baby indeed needs uh, or has a tongue tie, um, what we can do is look at positioning and jaw support underneath the breast uh, first to make to help make the feet more comfortable for mom and baby as well as help the baby be more effective in removing the milk that they need with a deeper latch and if positioning and support under the baby's chin does not help the next step is body work and if this still is not enough to improve um, the comfort and effectiveness of breastfeeding, then take the baby to an ENT or dentist for diagnosis and decision to treat. And then go back to the IBCLC for breastfeeding assistance and then take the baby back uh, for body work as well. So thank you all for watching this very long recording. I hope that you have a better understanding or idea of what tongue ties are. Also, what are some of the consequences, how to spot it and how to cope with it using alternative uh, positioning to help compensate. And if you would like to watch a free breastfeeding class series, please visit the breastfeeding clinic at www.breastfeedingessay.co.za. And um, if you need more assistance uh, with the baby regarding a tight tongue, uh, please contact me through the Breastfeeding Clinic's contact page at breastfeedingsa.co.za and feel free to subscribe to this channel for more breastfeeding class uh, and tidbit recordings and take care until next time.